Hello and welcome to the Little Things in Yarnum. Uh, this is the fourth episode of this tiny little series where I talk about some of the small stuff in Bloodborne's lore. Um, I haven't done one of these videos in a while, in a couple of weeks, because... Uh, sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while because I've been going through a lot of crap in... Uh, in my life right now just and I'm moving to a new apartment soon and that whole transition has really sort of dominated my whole life uh, focusing on that and uh, in my job transitioning because I'm gonna have to commute differently and so that that whole thing has really sort of overtaken my life right now but you don't you don't care about that um, and before we get into uh, today's topic um, I'd like to go over what has basically become a a standby of the of this show, which is going over things that people uh, commented on and people corrected about in the previous video. The previous video I talked about flowers and bloodborne, and a lot of people uh, mentioned that the the flowers in the hunter's dream those are. Those are cold blood flowers. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm a fucking idiot. Of, yeah, of course they're cold blood flowers. And and looking at them, they I don't know, maybe I've got a picture right here. I don't fucking know. And maybe they look exactly like they're those are cold blood flowers, and that's a really great connection. It it really makes you think why you need these flowers in order to unlock the seals in the chalice dungeons, because other than blood. The, the cold blood flowers are the most uh, prolifically, not prolifically, the most uh, required ingredient to unlock these, these seals in the Chalice Dungeon. So that's interesting to think about. So thank you to everybody who <laughs> sent me messages or posted comments saying, those are cold blood flowers, they're cold blood flowers, cold blood flowers, yes. Thank you very much. But that's really, that's why I love Calvin. That's really why I love uh, making these videos. Is is my favorite part of these videos is when people uh, point out things that I'm wrong about. That's 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 definitely my favorite part of making these. So thank you to everybody who contributed to that. Today we are talking about the dark beasts, and strap yourselves in because we are in for a bumpy ride with the dark beasts. As far as the little things in Yarnum go. This is probably as big as I'm going to get when it comes to this series because we're going to talk about a lot of shit. And this is a uh, you know, personal favorite topic of mine to talk about because the, the fight against the suspicious beggar slash abhorrent beast is far and away my absolute favorite fight in the game. Uh, hands down. that like and, and also the abhorrent beasts in the Chalice Dungeons. Those fights are so sick and that's that you know that's just me but and we're gonna go over all that shit um so with the dark beast i i thought it, it might be a good idea to start with archibald or Archibald. i'm gonna call him archibald uh archibald is a figure that you don't really learn a lot about in Bloodborne, he show, his name shows up on a couple items, um, basically having to do with electricity, or, you know, as they call it in Bloodborne, the blue sparks that surround the Dark Beasts, you know. Uh, electricity in, in Victorian times uh, did exist. There, uh, the very, very wealthy people did have electric lighting in their houses. Uh, in the Victorian era, that is similar to the time setting which Bloodborne takes place, the technology level in which Bloodborne takes place. But most people uh, used gas or, as, uh, or oil, uh, rather. Most people use like oil lamps or gas lamps, kind of like the, um, the incense burners that we find littered around all of Yarnum. So I figured it might be a good idea to start by talking about Archibald. So, Archibald really seems to be the Bloodborne equivalent, almost kind of like a direct reference to uh, Nikola Tesla. 
Uh, Nikola Tesla was an inventor in the late 19th century who did a ton of work on, you know, uh, electricity and all that sort of thing. They were, but they, he was a very eccentric sort of, he was the classic mad scientist in that he was a weird guy. He was very awkward. Um, he was very underappreciated by his colleagues at the time. He was very overlooked, historically speaking, up until really about 20 years ago was when people really started taking a look at, at Tesla's work and really going over it and, and, and seeing all the incredible things he had done. And we learn about Archibald that he was this eccentric sort of scientist who people kind of, they weren't really, they, they thought of him as just like a weird, this weird guy obsessed with the dark beasts sort of leave him alone, and he invented the tenitrous and the bolt paper. And from those items, we sort of get this, this picture of, of who this guy was. And we find the tenitrous and, and the tiny tenitrous and the bolt paper, actually. We find all of these items in Yahargal. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if you can find bolt paper... Hello. I don't know if you can find bolt paper anywhere other than Yahargal. I'm pretty sure Yahargal is the only place you find it, except for like chalice dungeons. But I could be wrong about that. Um, you find it in that little corridor where the uh, the man-eater boar is. Whatever, you don't care. Um, right, so bolt paper, uh, the tinnitus, the tini tiny tinnitus, we find all of these in <coughs> Yahargal. Which leads me to, to come to the, the conclusion that Archibald was a scientist for the School of Mensis. Uh, it doesn't mention him as being a scientist for the School of Mensis. Mensis, it mentions him as being a member of the Healing Church, but the School of Mensis was a part of the Healing Church, so I don't really see any reason why uh, that contradicts itself. Uh, and we also find in Yahargal, we find Parl. And Parl is the first dark beast we encounter. Uh, Parl, it looks like, and this is actually something that I, I only sort of realized very recently, because about a week ago, I was watching a video on Aegon of Astora's channel, shoutouts to Aegon of Astora, who, um, and, and in the comments below, just some random comment, someone, uh, Leo... Leo something, Leo Alvidara. Uh, sorry, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm way too lazy to look up your name. Uh, mentioned that, you know, it kind of looks like Parl escaped from Yahargal because it looks like, you know, that cell that we used to escape Yahargal was busted open and by something like the bars were pulled apart and, and, Leo, my man, that's brilliant. That's really, 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 really good catch. Because it really does look like Parl escaped from Yahargal. You know, he clawed his way out. You know, the wall is smashed open and he sort of stumbled out. And I guess basically what happened was he, he smashed his way out there uh, uh, and sort of passed out and, and, and died, quote unquote in that graveyard and everybody was like uh well i guess that didn't work because nobody moved him and they renamed the place graveyard of the dark beast uh that's what the it's called when you go to the lantern nearby so you know that's weird but what's most curious about parl and this is what a lot of people bring up when it comes to parl is the fact that he drops the spark hunter badge the Spark Hunter badge is described as being a badge that Archibald made for his friends. Specifically made for his friends. It's, it doesn't say it's a badge that Archibald wore. It says it's a badge that Archibald made for his friends. And so what are the implications of that? Well, we know that Archibald was obsessed with the Dark Beasts, and we know that he was trying to replicate the electricity of the Dark Beasts. That was his whole uh, scientific pursuit, was to replicate the 
electricity, basically. He saw these, he was fascinated by the blue sparks, and he wanted, you know, to, to recreate them. So there's a, there's a couple of possibilities when it comes to Parl, and I think the most likely conclusion is that Parl was one of Archibald's friends that he made the badge for, and maybe Parl was experimented on, maybe he... Uh, did it to himself, you know, who know? Who knows? Um, but that's, that's definitely what appears to have happened. It definitely looks like Archibald was a scientist working for the School of Mensis, and one of his buddies, Parl, turned into a dark beast. That's, that Occam's razor seems to point towards that as being the case. There were a lot of people who claimed that they thought the that uh, Dark Beast Parl was Archibald. That was actually a theory that I was kind of playing around with very early on, but I had to get rid of it simply because it's not called Dark Beast Archibald. It's called Dark Beast Parl. And, uh, you know, that's clearly its name, because the other Dark Beast we find in Lauren is called the Lauren Dark Beast. It's not called Dark Beast Parl. Um, so it's not like we can call a Parl as in as like a type of beast. So we, we see we see Parl and we see the Dark Beast. So let's so what are the Dark Beasts? What what is that? Well, it uh, it definitely appears to be the ultimate form of the Scourge of the Beast. You know, when we when we look at it at face value, the Dark Beasts, these huge creatures, seem to be the, the ultimate pinnacle of the Scourge of the Beast. This is what, if, if, look, god damn, I'm sorry. Calvin, stay over there. The Dark Beasts appear to be what the scourge of the beast is leading towards in a way they're the most ancient of the beasts in that manner of speaking so that leaves us with the abhorrent beasts because the abhorrent beasts oh and another thing to note is that every time it mentions the dark beasts for example in the beast claw it mentions the undead dark beasts and in the beast roar too it mentions borrowing the strength of the undead dark beasts which Which is sort of leads you to, to come to this conclusion that that those are the only two dark beasts you find. So, where did they come from? What are what is a dark beast, and what is their connection to the abhorrent beast? Because the abhorrent beast certainly seems to be like a living dark beast. It's it's not as big, but it's got fucking lightning everywhere. Uh, the silver beasts also have lightning, but in a very limited form, and the silver beasts seem more like very old, 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 old versions of the um, the the beast men that wander Yarnum. Like that's what the beast men are gonna look like, you know, two thousand years from now. They're gonna look like silver beasts, but the the dark beast is something special. It, it, it's it's not just a product of the Scourge of the Beast. It's something unique, a dark beast. And where does it come from? Well, this brings us to the Irreverent Izzy. The Irreverent Izzy is a figure that we learn about from the Beast Roar and the Beast Claw. And the Irreverent Izzy is described as presumably a hunter, seeing as the items that he or she made are referenced as being hunter tools. So presumably, the Irreverent Izzy was uh, some kind of hunter who, like Archibald, was obsessed with the Dark Beasts and wanted to borrow their power. And, and, and someone who's irreverent is someone who doesn't really take serious issues seriously. That's what someone who's irreverent is. If, for example, um, there was a national tragedy and I was making jokes about it, you could say I was being an irreverent person about that, na about that national tragedy. And Izzy 
Izzy is a weird name because Izzy, historically speaking, is a name, is a shortening of Israel, uh, the name, not the nation. Um, and Israel, the, the biblical name, is... It, it's a name with a lot of a lot of muddy history to it. It, it was the the second name of Jacob, son of Isaac, yada yada yada. But but in modern times, what that word, what that name has been given to, is to people whose names are unclear. Uh, an Israel Israeli, for example, is is a person whose is a Jew whose name is unknown. And during, in addition to that, during the uh, Holocaust, the Nazi regime would demand that if you were a Jew who didn't have a Jewish enough name, according to how they felt Jews were named, they would have you add Israel to your name to, to establish you as being a, a person with an unclear name. So it's very possible that Israel, or Izzy, uh, that's not his actual name, uh, or maybe his name is just Israel. It, it's, it's very unclear, but the irreverent Izzy makes a really, really big discovery when he designs the Beast Roar. Now the Beast Roar is a cheap arcane item that you can use. It basically gives you force, uh, is that what it's called in Dark Souls? I think it's called Force in Dark Souls. Maybe, you know, just, oh, and the shockwave, and you can reflect projectiles. Whatever. But it's so much more than that, because the description of the Beast Roar is that, that strangely enough, the inhuman, indescribable noise from the Beast Roar is projected with the caster's own vocal cords. And it goes on to say... What terrible things lurk within man? And that mirrors directly to what Carol, Runesmith Carol, discusses with the Clawmark rune and the Beast rune. The Beast rune, the, the forbidden rune that, that Carol uh, etches down, notes that the, the Beast is not just something that you get infected with it's something that lurks within humanity it's it's there and the claw mark is the the urge to Calvin my cat is being annoying he'll he'll calm down the 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 claw mark is the urge to submit to this inner beast inside of you now, there's a beast in all of us. In, in every single human being, there's a dark beast lurking within you. But that, that doesn't, it really contradicts with, with our understanding of how Bloodborne works in that the way we understand it, the way it's presented to us, the way it's explained to us, is that you become infected with this disease called the Scourge of the Beast that turns you into a monster, that you're not a monster. You're infected with something that turns you into a monster and you have to be put down like an animal because you're, you're too far gone to help. But that's not at all what's going on. Within humanity is the potential to become a beast. Now, there's two possibilities here. The first possibility is that we're all beasts, that's our natural state, and human and, be, and looking like this, like a human, is, is unnatural in some way, and that we're reverting back to our primal beasthood. Now, does that sound familiar to you? It should, because that's Dark Souls. That's word for word that is the big revelation about the undead in dark souls is that the undead are not a an affliction it's not a curse that's us in our natural state of being is is that and this this fleshy 
guys we have on is simply because uh, we have fragments of the dark soul that we call humanity. And we're and when we die, we're just reverting back to what we used to be, our our original form. That's Dark Souls. That's the big revelation of of the undead in Dark Souls. Is that's what is going on here? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't think that's what's going on here. What I think is going on here, and what I think a lot of people allure to, a lot of items allure to, is the fact that within humanity is the potential to evolve this is something that is very core to bloodborne is that we have the potential to ascend to evolve into a greater being but we also have the potential to devolve to descend into beasthood and this is where ev all of bloodborne all of the problems in bloodborne start because people can't agree which path is the right one. Uh, you know, Willem says we have to ascend to great ones. Lawrence says we have to ascend through the power of the old blood. And, sh sh and shit hits the fan. That's how the whole game starts. Ah, so, where, where does that leave us? It leaves us with the knowledge that we have this potential inside of us to become these dark beasts and that when we're administered with the old blood we become susceptible to this it's like it's as if the old blood awakens it and or or rather that the old blood makes it dormant inside of us it sort of feeds the taking the old blood the act of communion feeds this dark beast inside of us and then when the blood moon rises and the great ones descend, those who have this dark beast swelling within them, it awakens and they become monsters. That's what it appears is going on. But there's something special about the dark beasts. And we're going to talk about the suspicious beggar. The suspicious beggar is one of my favorite characters. One of them. Not my favorite character, but one of them. He's up there. So the suspicious beggar, for starters, we find him in the Forbidden Woods, apparently eating corpses. Um, he has bandages all around his face, and he's actually wearing the madman leggings. Did you? I, I didn't know this until a couple weeks ago when someone I was talking to randomly pointed it out to me. The suspicious beggar is wearing the madman leggings. So, is that just because it really fits his character model? Or is there something there? Because the suspicious beggar knows a lot more than you think he does. For starters, if you don't give him a place to... If you don't give him, a, you know, a, the information for a safe house, he goes... Yeah, you know, I can't believe this is all happening again. And then he goes, it's the curse of Yarnum. It's the curse of Yarnum. It's happening again. Now that... There's something there. Because... Yarnum, as we know has two meanings. It's not just the city. It's also the queen. And so the suspicious beggar, who's wearing the madman leggings, and as the madman garb reminds us, uh, someone who's mad is just a thoughtful soul who failed to reach any conclusions. This guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. And most importantly about the suspicious beggar, he can transform into a fucking beast at will and re and retain his intellect. He talks to us while we're fighting. He actually he taunts us while we're fighting him. He laughs at us. Not laugh. He's not laugh. He's not mocking us. He's he's trying to explain to us why what we're doing is so insane. Because 
he, he is saying, look at you. You've been drinking. You drink the blood of half the city and you call me a monster? It's like you have the balls to call me a beast when you've been slaughtering people, drinking blood? What kind of hypocrite are you? And remember what Gascoigne says to us. Because afraid to show your true face, are you? We all have this beast inside of us. We're all beasts. And when you kill the suspicious beggar, what does he say? He says, rancid beasts, every last one of us. Now, personally, you don't have to take any of this, any of what I'm about to say. Personally, I think the suspicious beggar is the irreverent, is he? Uh, I think he, he's wearing the, the madman leggings. I think he's been to Lauren. Uh, we know that Izzy was to Lauren because we find Beast Claws there. We find Izzy's admirer there. Um, so we know he's been to the ruins of Lauren. And the madman garb is what was worn by people who went to the Chalice Dungeons. So we know that Izzy went to Lauren. And we know that this guy has been to the Chalice Dungeons. Uh, we find the Beast Roar pretty close to him. So I think that's the irreverent Izzy. And I think what he discovered is that you can tap into the beast and you can make it part of you. Now, if we look at the beast claw, the, the weapon wielded by the irreverent Izzy and his admirers, uh, when we use it, when we use the transformed version of it, we get a, we get a fucking beast hand. Like, it gets all gr like snarled and you, you got claws and it's like wispy and, and, and stuff. It, like, you're transfor you transform. You've got this beast hand. You know, you can claw people with it. So, who's to say that maybe someone like Izzy, who was really talented and really perfected this art of harnessing the power of the beast, wasn't able to transform his whole body. And that's what the abhorrent beast was. If there was a beasthood mechanic that where you transformed into a beast, it would probably involve you looking an awful lot like that lightning around you, all that shit. So, this brings us back to the, the very beginning on, on what are the dark beasts. Well, the abhorrent beasts appear to be people who have tapped into whatever it is inside of human beings that have turned us, that have created, uh, you know, that, that have made us, given us the potential to become monsters and uh, have, have gained control over it. Now, the abhorrent beasts in, in Lauren don't talk to us, but I think it's perfectly reasonable to say that the abhorrent beasts in Lauren probably have a human form, too. They could probably go, hey, dude, what the fuck are you doing in my house? But they, they don't. They just attack us. I think that's a perfectly reasonable conclusion. And so the undead dark beasts possibly are beings that gained control over this and it consumed them and they died but their bones continued to animate with power and electricity you know that sort of thing maybe that's where parl came from it was uh, one of archibald and you know his friends they were trying to to tap into this source of power we have inside of us and it it, it went horribly wrong maybe parl died and he turned into you know the undead dark beast Maybe that's what the Lauren Dark Beast was. Maybe it was just an abhorrent beast that died and then transformed in its death into the Dark Beast. Who knows? But but those are the Dark Beasts. They're they're the manifest they're not no. the Dark Beast, a Dark Beast is a person. Because the beasts are people, as Jura will remind us. The Dark Beast is a person who hasn't just awakened or hasn't just been infected by the scourge he's embraced it he's he's taking control over it now a caveat to that is that the suspicious beggar does tell us i didn't ask for this which does throw a wrench into things now what are the implications of that are the implications that maybe once you start transforming a little bit it slowly starts to take over. Maybe the more you do it, it, it drives you crazy. He is eating people when we meet him. So maybe eventually you can't control it anymore. Maybe the ones in Lauren 
really can't talk to us because they've been so driven crazy by this dark beast inside of them that they, they don't even remember that they're human. Maybe that's what Izzy, or the suspicious beggar, is afraid of. Because he knows that eventually he's just going to be mindless, just like all the other beasts around. He's going to have succumb to the scourge, just like everyone else. And he no longer has his control, and that's what frightens him. And that's why he's so angry at the hunter. Wow. Dark Beast. I love the Dark Beast. It's so cool. So cool. Woo! My god, I just... I don't know how... I need to take a breath after that. Um, thank you very much for watching. That was The Little Things in Yarnum, The Dark Beast. Uh, next time... I'm not going to say next week this time, because I don't want to... I don't want to trap myself like that again. Next time, um, I, I want to sort of take a step back, take a breather, relax, and maybe talk about Lauren in general or other aspects of Thumaru uh, and the Chalice Dungeons because um, I actually I actually like the Chalice Dungeons. <laughs> I, I must be the only fucking person in the world who likes the Chalice Dungeons. I think they're cool. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll talk more about, about that next time. Uh, I also have a couple of other plans for another video that I want to make. Um, not like a, not, it's just a chat video like this. Nothing, nothing, I'm not fucking Aegon, you know, who makes beautiful shit. I'm just some schlub in front of a camera. But I do have some ideas I want to talk about. Um, if you want me to talk about anything, leave a comment below. Um, I do read them, even though I don't usually respond to them. Um, and if you send me a message on Reddit, or if you send me an email, I, I, I do read it, even if I don't respond to all of the messages I get, I do read them. So it means a lot to me whenever someone sends me that. And if you want me to go over something, ask me about something specific, and I'd love to, to talk about it. I'm probably going to talk about uh, Lauren next time. I'd like to go over that, and I'd like to take a step back, because last time I talked about the Winter Lanterns. Today I'm talking about Dark Beasts. It's like, it's supposed to be the little things in Yarnum. I need to chill a little bit. I need to relax. So that's probably what I'm going to go for. Thank you very much for watching and for bearing with me while I explode with my inner beast.